Learning outcomes. At the end of this lesson, the learners will be able to describe a number of different bonds used to build a brick wall. Introduction to brickwork. Bonding. Bonding is the term given to the various arrangements of brickwork. The reason for bonding is to evenly distribute the load that the wall is carrying along its entire length. This ensures that the wall reaches its, its maximum stability. If you look at the image here, we can see that if a load is put on at the top where it's shown with the arrow, this load comes onto the wall at a shaded area and the shaded area below it shows how the load is spread right down through the wall and this in turn will pass the load onto the foundations. If the wall wasn't correctly bonded, we can see here by looking at the shaded area that when the load comes on it's not transferred through the whole width of the wall and in turn passing the weight on down into the foundations. Dry bonding. It's a good idea to set out the first course of bricks dry before starting to build. This is called dry bonding. This is done by placing the bricks in line along the length of the wall with a 10mm gap between each one. Dry bonding can help identify possible problems that may occur during the construction of the wall. For example, the position of the openings in the wall or the size of the pair pens. The following two slides contain short videos demonstrating how to dry bond a brick and block wall. Okay, this is a demonstration uh, showing you how to dry bond, uh, dry bond a course of bricks and then I'm going to build them as well. The reason we dry bond the bricks out is to make sure that all the joints are evenly spaced out. Uh, it's the same process that we go through when we're setting out the first course of bricks. We dry bond them out first to make sure we know what way uh, the bricks are going to walk in and what size the joints are going to end up in. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, we already have the wall built up here and we have a bit of a lead and the lead is put there in order to support the line so we want the line to be flush with the top arras of the brick wall there because we're using that as a guide so we get our line of pins, we wrap the line around the pin, stretch it over the top of the brick wall and then stick it into the bedroom there and we want to make sure that there's a good bit of tension in the line and then we get a brick like this just to hold the line in place so it's flush with the top arras of the brick wall so now we're going to dry bond it out I'm going to use this here as a guide. This is a box drill and it's 10 millimeters thick, which is the same thickness as, uh, as the cross joint. The same thickness as the cross joint should be. So, I'm using that as a guide there on the face of the brick here, just to evenly space the bricks on. Okay? Once I have them in place now, I just trim my eye across them there and I can see that all the joints are evenly spaced out. Now they don't all have to be exactly 10 mil because we already have uh, the length of the wall set out already. The important thing at this stage and for each course after this is that all the joints appear to be more or less the same size. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this course in now and I'm going to build it in one brick at a time. So I'm going to leave these bricks in place. So when I take the brick up and spread the bed and drop the brick in, uh, I'll be able to make sure and, uh, that all the joints are the same size and maintain uh, maintain the source of the joints. So I put my brick in there, keep the 10 mil bed joint there, make it or cross joint there, make sure I have a same size joint on this side. Make sure that when you're building the bricks that you don't let them snag the line, because they're not touching the line at all. So you only want to see a bit of daylight between the brick and the line. You want to make sure when you're moving the line there that it's, when you're touching the line that it's continuing to move there. So it's not being snagged by um, the bricks.
We're now going to discuss bonds that are used in brickwork. Stretcher bond. Stretcher bond is half bond. This means that the bricks in course 2 should overlap the bricks in course 1 by half its length. This process, re process is repeated through the full height of the wall. You can see there from the image with the two pillars and the wall in between that we can see the um, stretcher bond and how it works. This is a very common bond and it's seen all over the city. To help maintain half bond, the pair pens or cross joints should be plumbed and marked with a pencil. That means that the joints on course 3 should be directly above the joints on course 1 and the joints on course 5 should be directly above that again and the same goes for uh, the courses 2, 4 and 6. When you're setting out brickwork, it should be set out to give a good appearance. So brickwork should be set out in a manner that gives a balanced appearance. So what we're looking for there, if you look at the image, we can see that the size of the pillars are, are three bricks and you've got five brick window opening in between. What you don't want to see on brickwork is to see a pair at one end, say six bricks, then another pair could be two bricks and the final pair being one brick. 
English Bond English Bond is one of the strongest bonds and is formed by laying alternate courses of headers and stretchers. This is a photo of uh, an English Bond wall. We can see there that there's headers on one course and there's stretchers on the other. We also have a plan here now of an English Bond wall. If you look at the bottom of it you can see the plan of course 1 and the plan of course 2. Course 1 is stretchers and the wall. this wall is classed as being one brick thick. That means it will be 215 millimetres thick. So we can see there that there's a course of stretchers and then course 2 is a course of headers. And if we look to the right hand side at the end view we can see how they're bonded across each other. What's used to give you the bond on the second course, the course of headers, is we use what's called a closure. The closure is a quarter brick or a quarter bat and this is cut to the quarter size and is placed after the leading header. English Garden Wall Bond English Garden Wall Bond consists of three courses of stretchers and one course of headers. The advantages of this is that a good finish can be achieved on both sides of a one brick thick wall and it can save bricks by using blocks on the inside. Here's a picture of an English Garden Wall Bond wall. We can see there clearly that there's three courses of stretchers and then a course of headers. Here's a plan of it. So if you look at the bottom again, we see that we've got a plan of course three. Plan of course three, you can see that there's the stretchers there with the blocks in behind it. And then the plan of course four has the headers going across. If we look at the end view, we can see how that on the end view on the right hand side, we can see how the wall is tied together where we have the three courses of stretchers and the block beside it. And then we have the header coming across it. Flemish Bond. Flemish Bond, although not as strong as English Bond, but is considered to be aesthetically superior. It is formed by laying headers and stretchers alternately in each course. Picture of a Flemish Bond wall, if you look at it there carefully, you can see that you've got a stretcher, header, stretcher, header, and this is how it goes out right up through the whole wall. If we look at the plan here of the Flemish Bond wall, we can look down below and we can see the plan of course 1 and the plan of course 2. Course 1 starts off with a header, closure, stretcher, and then we have a header, stretcher, all the way through. And then course 2 starts off with stretcher, header, stretcher, header. And this is how the wall works all the way up. If you look at the end view to the right hand side, we can see how the wall is tied together.